Hi, welcome back for another live stream. It's the radicalism. We're doing the radicalism today. So uh, make sure you have your paints, your miniatures, your water all ready to go. If you're just going to come here and have a chat with me, that's fine too. So um, drink, food, comfortable, make sure you're ready. And we're right into it. Uh, this is, um, I would say, uh, my day to chill out. So there is no prepared material, but by all means, you can ask me all sorts of different questions. I am happy to answer those questions. Hi, welcome to How to d d My name is Fred Wheeler, and today I am going to do some painting. That's right. I'm painting not a rat that's playing a flute. I'm painting the raticlism. I've already sort of done about two sessions with this. We've got a fair way. I am going to finish off the details for today. Try to get it. It's gone from this. And it's now moved on to more like this. And I am kind of aiming for something like this. So there were a couple of areas that I noticed I had missed. So I'm going to try to fix them up today and get them sorted out. So that essentially I can put this aside and say it's done. It's ready for wash. You know, it's ready to do some washing with. Not in the laundry, of course. All right. So first thing is I actually found, finally found the area on it that I had missed. There was a, a small vein that I wanted to paint uh, red. And I, I had missed that and I couldn't figure it out. Somebody was trying to point it out to me. I couldn't use my eyes. Just It just wouldn't show up. Um, uh, let's put in the hashtag question dot please and by all means ask questions that will keep me occupied while I'm doing this. So we're going with fine brush and I'm using the um, um, Cabian Crimson, that colour there. Okay, so first thing we do, it gets a, just a tiny bit, I don't need very much, it is literally a, just a small area that I missed. It, it isn't anything particularly significant at all. I could, I could have easily have just ignored it and forgot about it if I wanted to. And I was, I was thinking I would do that. I, I really was. Um, but no, now that I know it's there, I will do it. And somebody had said, right chest, where the, now, can I see the thing? Is there a line there now that I can see it? Yes, there it is. It is so small, the detail there. That's all it is. <laughs> that's, that's what I missed in terms of a vein. How's that for ridiculous, right? That is so small. It's impossible to see. Now, the other thing I wanted to do is there was a small section of white on part of the hand that had been missed. So I thought, well, I will, I'll tackle that as well. I'm going to use um, a standard brush rather than a fine detail brush for this. And I'm going to just grab a little bit of white. I had an accident with my white uh, some of you will probably be aware of this not so long ago. Um, I'm hoping that I don't have a repeat. Repeat problems would be bad. Repeat problems would be bad. So, cross your fingers. I am praying for... Oh, I'll move the miniature further away just in case. Right, that should do it. <laughs> I'm not squeezing the bottle this time. I was squeezing the bottle, nothing was coming out, and then suddenly it all just came out really, really quickly. That wasn't very helpful. And that's, I think that's thin enough. So all of the stuff that I've been using is down in the description if people wanted to know. Okay? And you're welcome to um, paint along with me. So just along this hand, or should I say one of the thumbs or fingers, I noticed that I missed a lot of white. So I'm going to have to, I have to sort of brush off some of this and use a smaller brush to get it on. Yeah, it's still too much. Brush, 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 brush. I don't normally use a standard brush as a um, as a dry brush, but kind of don't have a choice because I don't really have anything that I think would be suitable for doing that. And I've got to be careful how much paint I put on here too. But I frankly do not want to have to redo it. I'm going to move on. I'm, I haven't done the chains yet. The chains that hold this thing, 
I haven't actually covered those yet, so I'm going to certainly be focusing on the chains today. Oh, is that too much? We'll try it again. Bam. All right, so done the teeth, done the ears, done the eyes, done the inside the mouth, and it's time to start working on the chain, which is going to be, I think, standard brush for most of it, and then fine detail to tidy things up. So we'll turn that around. Hi Joe, how's it going overboard DM? Yes, guess what, I'm back. Uh, just waking up, oh my gosh, I have a few hours till I hit the road. I have a 14 hour drive across the states. Ah, you're in your brother's wedding. Well don't, you can't miss that for a live stream painting session mate. That's That would be unacceptable. I don't think your brother would be very impressed. <laughs> Make sure whatever you're doing is you're getting yourself some food and, and drinking to you before you've, uh, you've got to take off. <laughs> anyway, let's start off with the one. Um, so I'm, so what am I using? Because I had a choice. I had a couple of choices in terms of metallics from these uh, Marvelous Pigments uh, or Knowles' Marvelous Pigments, the Monster Paint set. I had the Dwarven Bronze. I didn't really want to use bronze. I was tempted to use the gold, the um, Kyrene um, gold, but no... Um, so I went with the silver, silver dragon color. Okay, I do have an oil, oily steel color as well, but I think I might use that after I've done this color. Um, just because I think that this color is going to put go on a lot better than the other one. And um, I also noticed with the oily steel, it is very similar to this color anyway. I mean. It is very hard to get different metallic, silvery, metally colours that are significantly different. They all tend to look pretty much the same. And hit that. Okay, and do that on the other side. Flip it around. So yes, what have people been up to? I, I would be interested to know. Um, I have been prepping for tomorrow's video. And I've been watching AJ's video with Mr. Rex, um, Dungeon Dad and Jordan. Um, we were doing a whole bunch of testing so that he could try and sort out his setup. And I can see his frustration when I was watching the video. I was like, okay, now I can see why you are frustrated. But still, you know, that it would uh, this would be the very first time that Dungeon Dad, AJ Pickett, Jordan, the PH is silent, and Mr. Rex have been essentially in the same video. This is the very first time. That it couldn't, couldn't quite get them all on. Uh, when Rex was hosting, but uh, this time around they got them all. They're just not all in the same view all at the same time Zero's hobbies. How's it going? So if you haven't checked out that video go check it out some point It's on the AJ Pickett uh, YouTube channel. He does monster law. I'm sure most of you know him Or maybe some of you know him Okay, that. I'm not going to be able to stick with this brush for very long, I can see myself. Yep, I'm going to have to stick with this brush for just a small period of time, and then it's going to have to be back to this the smaller brush. It's going to be too hard to get at everything otherwise. I can see it right now. Here we go. I had myself a haircut. Has anybody ever had to try and cut their own hair with a pair of stationary scissors, um, a rubbish bin, uh, a mirror mounted on the wall, and just the, on their own and try to get their hair? Because of course I can't go anywhere to do that now, and my hair is just getting out of control, and I couldn't wait any longer. <laughs> so, so I decided I will cut my hair myself, and I don't have any... Um, Clippers, so no clippers. Is it? <laughs> it wasn't an option. For those of you who are wondering, um, this is a So, so I sorry for those of you who haven't been with me before. 
This is the Rataclysm from the Animal Adventures Secrets of Galt Cove uh, box series. Uh, this is the box with the Rat King of um, Galt Cove and it comes with this Rataclysm, this horrible looking thing, and four uh, were rats and then there's the Rat King sitting on top of a, um, a jester. So there's quite a few in the box, but I decided this is the one I wanted to focus on because it's a big monster. I like big mo monsters. Can you blame me? I don't think it. I, I think it's a no-brainer. Big monsters always come first. All right. No, you can't see absolutely. Yeah. I was unaware of this particular series. I had just assumed that Animal Adventures just produced little cats and dog miniatures or something like that. But uh, no, they've got a whole lot of other stuff as well. I was kind of shocked that my, um, my family were able to buy it at a shop. Normally the only thing you can find are the Knowles' um, line or the WizKids line, and that's pretty much it. There's nothing else. Yeah. Right, so um, so there's a, a chain that apparently holds around the feet, the arms, and the tail of this thing. So apparently the tail can whack you pretty hard. I'm assuming that's why there's a, a metal strap around there. Is anybody playing some Dungeons & Dragons anytime soon? In the next week or so? I have a session zero coming up uh, in about two days. So I will be getting to be a player rather than a dungeon master. It's been over two years now, so I'm ready to do it. Ready for somebody else to take on the mantle while I get to sit back and uh, let them do all the hard work. <laughs> Uh, what's that, Joe? Question. Uh, what could D&D come out with that would really excite you? Okay, what would... Okay, well, you already know the answer to this, Joe, but I'll answer the question because you've asked me a question to keep me talking, which is always a good idea. I would like to see an adventure book that has um, just a, a map and, say, like a, um, a one-page adventure and to have, for it to be a hard copy book and to have close to 200, 250 adventures in it. Just small one shots. Things that you could just pick up and use whenever you need to. That's the kind of product that would excite me. Now Candlekeep did a great job but frankly I don't think it went far enough. That's the kind of product that I think uh, people are far more interested in which you can literally integrate into your own campaign or whatever you're doing as you need or if all you can do is you've only got five, ten minutes to prepare your adventure before you're playing because you were working too long or, or you're just too tired or the kids kept you up or you've got other things in, in life you've got to sort out, you can just prepare it that quickly. Yeah, taking a break has been very, very good for me and... Um, I am enjoying the fact that I do still have a couple more days before I have to go back into the, the slog. Um, but it's going to happen. That's a reality. So that is the product that I would like to see, um, Joe, is a product where you get multiple adventures and you literally can just pick and choose what you like. I've seen it done before. So if anybody says it can't be done, I've seen people do 12 adventures. Now the only difference is you'd have to do a lot more. So the great thing is you wouldn't need, this is one time where you could get away with just a contents page and you wouldn't need to worry too much about an index. Although if it's including monsters that have never been, been used before, that's a little bit different. You'd still have to have the appendix. And you may still have to reference things a little bit. And if you've got magic items, that changes things a little bit. Yeah, so maybe you need the index and you need to have a, um, an appendix as well for something like that. But that. That is what I would be excited to see them do. 
I would buy that product, absolutely. But I just don't think that their head's working that way. You know, I, I think that they are thinking um, big scale storylines, things that they can use across different media, rather than just um, quick, fast adventures that can be integrated into somebody's um, table game easily. Um, I do believe that XP to level 3, is it XP to level 3, is about to produce a, a product on their Kickstarter that's kind of like that. I know that um, Nerdaki, out of the box, they did something a little bit like that as well. It's not quite what I was looking for. I still feel like it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's still too much detail and too long. and um, Yeah, so not quite what I'm after. But I've bought all of the Cobalt Press um, prepared books, prepared one and two. Um, I've used a good chunk of the layer books that they put out, which only have, you know, four or five pages of adventure, and then you, and that's it. You get a map of everything, and um, you play it out. And, it, you know, you might say, well, that's just not enough information, but I've actually found it's not the case. I've actually found that how, however they've managed to write it, They've provided just enough to get the job done and do a good job. And my players have had a really good time with those. And that's why I'd like to see more of that sort of thing. Okay, so that's worked out pretty well there. Okay, so I think, I think I'm, I'm working my way from the, um, the top, from the bottom to the top today by the looks. And that is next is the tail let's do the tail one. Oh, you'll have to ask me some questions otherwise i'm going to get really quiet because this is fine detail you know what happens you start holding your breath start focusing on the painting rather than anything else okay all right i'm gonna get some more, get some more silver out And hit that there. Uh, if you have any questions in terms of what am I likely to do with this later, I'm definitely going to wash it eventually. What I have been considering doing is I will, on my own personal YouTube channel, hi Fender. Fender's a uh, patron, for those of you who don't know. Um, how's it going? Brent, hello Brent. I'm DMing, you're DMing a game and next session next week will be the the big boss fight um time to slay the white dragon but it turns out there's two white dragons now brent tell me before i get sidetracked on something else are you playing dragon of ice by a peak are you is that the adventure is this uh, that is that the dragon there is that why you decided to stick two dragons in i would i would very much like to know Um, I I'm so tempted to to, um, to do a video on um, Ice by a Hold and the White Dragon and that adventure, but I also have been wanting to sort of leave it. Do you know there is a, a percolation time I've discovered with um, video content. Sometimes you have to leave things to percolate a little bit longer than just a week or two. Um. Uh, but when the second white dragon shows up, I'm going to have a gold dragon. Ah, okay. All right. What's this question, Joe? Um, what is your honest opinion uh, if they were to drop 6th uh, edition uh, too soon? Do you think um, it can stop the game growing or are old timers already done and not going to support? Okay, so basically if... 6e drops and they they put it out do you think that do i think that people will not play it no no i think it depends on what they make honestly i think that the game is starting to get a bit bloaty and and there's so much stuff scattered everywhere and they've had to have so much errata that dungeons and dragons 5e is overdue for a 5.5 an actual you know 
um, the player's handbook getting upgraded from where it is. Ah, okay, Brent. So, no, it's not I Spy I Hold. Okay, all right. Okay, different. I'll check that in a second. Let me answer that question that Joe started with me, Overboard DM. So, basically, I think it's going to be down to what they make. Whatever they make will be backward compatible, I'm sure of that. Um, whatever they make won't be too far off what we are familiar with in terms of Dungeons and Dragons already right now. So you ask yourself, well, hang on, if that's the case, why have a 6C? Well, because there's a movie coming out. I hate to say it, but there's a, there's a movie coming out and the 50th anniversary is coming. Uh, not to mention you've got the potential for the hobby as it currently is to lose a lot of its current, you know, the people who have been playing it for a while to go somewhere else. Why is that? Because they've made some changes. If you bought the original um, books, you would probably find that this at this point you really kind of find yourself needing to have Tasha's Cauldron of Everything and a few other books to actually keep up with every, all the stuff that's going on. Plus all of the, you know, I mean, how many races the Artificer got changed from Eberron and then in Tasha's, it's different. There are changes to it. These are things that need to be sorted out. So I think that 5.5 is very likely. A 6C uh, will create an awful lot of problems for me because I would have to make a whole lot more videos on how to play the game because it would be slightly different. Um, that's a drag as far as I'm concerned, but I knew that day would have come eventually anyway. Uh, making those really short rules videos is is one of the hardest things I've ever done. I can't, ca I mean, they, they, they might look like they're easy to make, but they're not. To actually figure out how much to put into a video, how to present it, how to explain it, how to demonstrate it. Demonstration, you know, talking about rules is one thing, but the demonstration side of those videos is fundamentally what makes them work. And so when people explain rules in videos and they have their head, I, I, I kind of have to laugh because I'm thinking, mm, yeah, the problem is when you start dealing with the real basics like that, people need you to show them what you're doing. And if you can't do that, that's a problem. So that's one aspect of that that would sort of be a downer for me because I'd have to probably remake all of those videos. Uh, so does that answer kind of your question? Uh, Brent, um, who was the original inhabitant of the layer of the layer show up to aid the party? The gold dragon is at the end of twilight. Okay, dragon life uh, dies right off. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Okay, I get it. Um, yeah, no, I didn't really understand what you were trying to communicate there, Brent. Sorry about that. You, what, do you, what is this, Joe? You're seriously considering just making this Ed edition my last Ed edition? <sighs> yeah, and see, this is what killed Dungeons & Dragons when it happened with Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. Um, a lot of people just wouldn't shift over to a new version, which, look, that's your prerogative. I understand that. What I think people have to realise is if you bought the original Player's Handbook, I can assure you that there are so many rules in there that need to be need the errata page now. It's not funny. Some rules have changed so significantly, they, they don't even resemble what they were. I'm looking at you, long rest. That long rest mechanic, oh. Still makes me angry that they changed that because I did, well, frankly, it wasn't necessary just because a few people could not get their head around what was going on there. It's like hit points. Everybody thinks hit points are health points and related to damage, and it's not. Um, I did see your video on Cryovane, okay, and I made an uh, and I made an exception. Have two white dragons together and named them Cryovane. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's funny. Oh, that's that's good. I like that. That's quite entertaining. So one of the things I have been considering um, too is now I've talked about shorts, but I'm probably not going to put the shorts on my channel. Certainly not at this point. 
Certainly not at a time when they don't make money. And they still require effort. Because I am not full time and I do not have the ability to try to do everything and not have it work for me in some way. Um, and my view of shorts is that they are generally garbage videos. But a 15 second spin around and show off a miniature that I've painted as a short, I can see me doing that with a little bit of music over the top because there's really not time to say anything and you get to see the final product once I've finished painting something. That I will probably put on my personal YouTube account or um, channel. Not the How to D&D one, it would be the Fred Wheeler um, channel. Which you may or may not be able to find, but won't matter. Because um, the experiment will basically be, I'll put them up, see how they do, and if they seem to be working, and YouTube gets their act together with shorts, then I might transfer them over to YouTube. But there are a few things they need to sort out before I would consider doing that. Otherwise, um, it might look a little bit different. Okay, so, whoa, he did a little bit of dance there. Um, what's this, Joe? Someone like myself is looking at the direction the game is going and not liking it. Yeah, I understand. I have plenty of content and rules already. Uh, if the next um, ed is um, compatible, it might be might be a selective purchase. I totally understand that. Yep, that is that is certainly likely to happen, isn't it? Because you think about all the material they've put out, they've put out so much, you could keep going for years. Your only problem is going to be players. Will there be enough player base to be able to play 5th edition if you don't want to go to 6e? Not that it's here yet, okay? Not that it's here yet. So that that's the big question. Okay, so now... I'm using Vallejo Oily Steel, which is basically another silver, but it's a darker one, and I'm going to just hit certain areas of it um, with the intention of sort of dirtying it up a little bit, because Oily Steel is a bit dirtier than this. This, this color that I'm used already is more pristine, okay? And this other new color I've got here is not. All right, I'm going to have to grab this. This isn't going to work. I'm fingering the miniature too much. Okay. Okay, there. That's better. It's in place. Uh, do you use voices as a DM or PC or anyone uh, uh, you play with? It's tough. Um, we don't do it much. Um, I used to when I was younger, but my voice has actually gotten worse over time. And uh, I think the hay fever, no, that's very, very thick. No, no, it's not actually. It looks thick. Maybe it is. All right, we'll see. Uh, so I used to, but I don't anymore. And I, I know that seems a little bit strange, but the, the reality is I never really found that I was that great at them anyway. And then there's the other, other thing to remember, and that is, can you maintain it? Do you know what I mean? Can you maintain that voice for a length of time without you're dam damaging your voice, which is actually quite difficult sometimes. I know some people can do it, and that's fine. But as I get old, I'm older and older, my voice gets weaker and weaker. And so therefore, you know, I do a lot of talking. You know, I run a YouTube channel, so there's a lot of talking involved. So I have, I have actually stayed away from doing a lot of voices. It's not to say that I haven't done it in the past. I have. Um, you do not need to do voices to um, be a good dungeon master. I know some dungeon masters and some people think that's certainly not correct. Well, they can have their opinion, but I don't agree with them and I'm just going to ignore them, uh, frankly. Okay. Yep, that's working out pretty well. We're going to keep doing that. Do, 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 do. That's, so that's the deal with that. Voices. Do them if you feel like you can and you like doing them, and if you can't do them, don't worry about them. Okay, so this is this is just a very subtle change. I mean, you will barely be able to see what's going on with a lot of this. So, 
so anybody who is thinking that there's going to be huge differences in the uh, <laughs> the view, it's not really the same case. It's more the view that I can see. I mean, I doubt you guys can make it out. Uh, what's that, Fender? Have you seen Trevor's um, voice about um, our video about resource dice? Um, yes, I have. I have seen Trevor's um, video on resource dice. Uh, I do believe, I think it was Trevor, but we talked about resource dice uh, a while ago in one of our video chats. And um, I did actually bring up the topic of of resource, you know, dice as a resource. And it was a discussion around, is Dungeons & Dragons going to go diceless? So, yeah. I found it interesting because... Um, I think Trevor's No Fun Allowed is who we're talking about. No Fun Allowed has a channel, okay? I know him well. Um, basically, we were talking about, you know, would would Dungeons and Dragons go diceless? That video will come out eventually. It, it is. It will come out. I, I've got it sitting there waiting for me to do something with it. Um, and I think a lot of people did not believe me. Did not did not think that Dungeons and Dragons could go diceless. And I said, well, even, I don't want it to go diceless, but I think it's certainly likely to over time. That there's a chance that we will see a very different game than we're used to. And, um, yeah, be prepared. Be prepared <laughs> for a game that looks very different to what you're used to. And it may not be in your lifetime or even my lifetime, but I still think there's a, a high probability that Dungeons and Dragons will have a diceless game. I mean, Wizards of the Coast has been trying to make it a card game for years. But hard to do without annoying too many people, though. Uh, what's that? What's this, Joe? Um, I think it's fun doing voices, but I don't have that many different ones. Laugh out loud. I have a... A decent dwarf, hag, old wizard, young boy, orc, and Yatani. Um, Yanti. Okay. All right. So basically, a reptile. Okay. So this is this is this is hard getting into this area here. And then the angle on this one is terrible. Inside angle, inside angle. There we go. Around the back. So I've done that one, I've done that one, I've done that one. And that's actually worked out pretty well. I'm actually pretty happy with that. As a as a touch up. Okay, right now. Cursory look before I start doing anything else. <laughs> I can hear I can hear a two year old okay so that looks good there I'm happy with that I am actually a little unsure that I want to leave the tail this, this way I actually think that the tail needs a little bit more so I'm going to do something with it uh, well I can kind of understand that Joe, I would imagine it would be difficult. <laughs> okay, so this is what the plan is. I'm going to hit the tail because I feel like the tail needs needs something. I don't want it just to be this white and black color. So I'm going to go with um, the the rundown of greens that I had before. I'll do that fairly quickly. So we're going to go troll skin, emerald, uh, fey emerald, and then the grug green. Okay, so let's make that happen quick, not slow. Right, that's the one I want. And as I said, I will make sure to leave these um, these videos, these painting streams. I'll leave them up. I I will just accept 
that I need to get. I've been watching a lot of the bigger channels and how they aren't separating their live stream content from other stuff. Maybe because they're actually getting, you know, a fair amount of people watching them anyway. But one of the things I did notice, um, actually, Joe, and you might be interested to know about this, is that I had assumed that painting videos were a bit silly for me to have up. That, you know, once once I'd gone through the process of doing it live and people had been part of the live experience, that nobody would watch them. Far to, I was sadly mistaken because I looked at some of them and I think, hang on, when did it wind up with uh, a thousand views? Uh, and this is just me painting a miniature. And usually every time I do uh, a follow-up on the miniature, and it hasn't, I haven't been able to do it in one sitting, uh, the drop-off is pretty extreme. What I did notice is that people do look for the follow-up videos or streams. So that means that it might take a while, anything from months to years, but eventually, eventually, people do actually watch them. And I guess that's because they've got to have something to watch while they're doing their own painting. So, um, learn something from that. And so I will, I'll be leaving them alone and just accepting that it might take quite some time for YouTube to uh, present them to somebody or for somebody to find them. Okay, this. This is the Fey Emerald. Okay, so what do you got here, Brent? Did you enjoy the Hobbit movies? Um... Thoughts. I, I thought compared to Rings, but still fantasy, so kind of plus. Uh, you thought it was down? Well, so let's let's be fair about The Hobbit. First off, okay, that movie, The Hobbit, was not initially supposed to be made by <laughs> Peter Jackson. Peter Jackson spent years preparing to make Lord of the Rings. It was well thought out he filmed all three all at once um, it was like a fine well-oiled machine okay then somebody else was brought on to do uh, the next movie and they they pulled out they dropped it for whatever reason and nobody wanted to touch the hobbit with a 10-foot pole the only person who would touch it was was peter jackson which resulted in a few problems because there was a company that, d that messed with it. Now the book is quite small. The story of The Hobbit is quite small, right? It's a really good story, but it is, it is, it is really, you know, it is just a, a bite-sized story. It is not supposed to be anything particularly significant. But here's the thing. I would imagine... That once they decided they that uh, Peter Jackson would do it, and that Peter would do it, Peter was probably looking at it and saying, "Well, I can't use anything the other guy was sort of um, doing because that doesn't make any sense." So I'm using the Grung Green right now, and so I'm going to have to do my own thing. My understanding is that he had like no time. It was at three months to do the film prep for the first movie. And once he'd filmed it, he realized, well, actually, there's probably too much going on here. I'm going to have to do something about that. And so another movie was looked at and then, then decided, well, actually, maybe we should just make it three. Now, I would imagine that there is quite a bit of pressure from a company uh, that makes movies for him to turn it into a tri trilogy. I don't actually think that Peter Jackson was ultimately responsible for making that happen. Does that make sense? That the reality is that when you make a movie and you can make three movies out of the same story, um, film company would definitely be interested in doing something like that because that's three movies you can sell to the public. The second movie he made was a little bit easier for um, him to um, sort out. My understanding is that it was getting written as they were filming. He was literally still trying to write it on, on set. And the, the third movie, they gave up. They tried to do it, it didn't work, and he said he packed it all up and they went off and spent some downtime to actually, you know, work it all out because they just had nothing to work with. So I do not expect the Hobbit movies um, to be as good as Lord of the Rings because they just were not planned out the same way. 
Uh, this sounds weird, but um, it's um, possible people are listening to your videos uh, much much later just to hear your accent. And it's very calming to listen to while driving to, or uh, <laughs> driving or uh, what? Or dishes, doing dishes, sleeping, finding it very relaxing. <laughs> and I agree with your assessment of a hobbit. Rushed, not his vision, but did it anyway. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the thing. So, yeah, I don't want to give Peter Jackson a hard time about a movie, which, frankly, he didn't need to do, you know. Um, and the Tolkien estate did not really want him to do it either. <laughs> um, and, yes, there were some significant changes made to the Hobbit. Do I think that they were bad changes? Honestly, no, I don't. Uh, there were certain things that I kind of felt were a bit, a bit much. But you've got to you got to understand it's a film ad ad adaptation, and um, they do this all the time. They're never ne never like the books. They really aren't. Nothing's ever like the book. I don't even think that um, a movie made like the book would be any good. Frankly, I think it would be kind of awful. Now, Brent, you you make a good point. Um, AJ Pickett informs me that when he makes his law D and D law videos, uh, people um, sign on to his Patreon, so he can they can listen to his videos and his voice um, to help put them to sleep. I didn't realise that. Okay, so I am happy enough with the tail. It doesn't go all the way up, but that's fine. That wasn't my intention, and. I'm pretty happy with the overall look of it so far. I am just going to give it a cursory look to make sure, because you know how I am. I do not like to have things unfinished, and I just don't want to miss anything. Anything that I need to pick out. The teeth are good. I'm happy with the teeth, even though I botched it up last time. The eyes are fine. The ears are all right. Well, this one here on this side is probably, there's only one eye that I'm kind of not super happy with, but... Uh, SC, absolutely true. I'm not sure what's absolute. What did I say that was absolutely true? I'm now I'm curious. Um, I'm all. Lo I'm also loath to do anything more and make it a, a ball. Um, mess it up. So I'm um, just. Just give me a second while I look over the miniature, and make sure all the things that I wanted to do and the paint is where I wanted it to be. Because that that's my biggest problem. Is I you know. If I look back at, at it and it feels like it's it's kind of rushed and scummy, I won't be happy. The accent effects. Do you know SC and Brent? I had so many people tell me that they hate me um, and that I should um, uh, kill myself uh, because I make such terrible um, videos and my accent is garbage and I don't know how to speak English. I've had that happen to me. They are the comments that get put on hold and then I send them off to YouTube and I'll let YouTube sort them out because, you know, it's bre breached some of the um, guidelines for that. Okay, there is a little patch here that I have spotted. I knew this was going to happen. I just knew it. That I would spot a patch that I'm not happy with. Where did I put the paint? Um, what is that uh, glue stick um, holding it on? Oh, okay. Why were you rubbing the, the bottom of the miniature? Oh, oh, sorry. So this is a pill bottle, okay, that I used to hold it with so I don't have to hold the miniature. And this is just blue tack. It's just tacky putty, okay? It doesn't go doesn't go hard, and it, it's but it still holds pretty strong, okay? So that is something that I often use when I'm doing any kind of miniature painting because, as you know, every time you touch the miniature, the paint comes off. Um, and that's a big pain in the butt. Andre Lupier, is that Lupiers? Lupiers? Andre, well, I really like the uh, the tone that you that you give uh, your mini. Uh, I think my Nurgle Death Guard would fit really <laughs> well into this. Yes, I suppose it is very Nurgleish. I am a wheel of. Uh, I know what you're talking about. I played 40k. Um, okay, so let's see if I can. Is there enough paint there for me to get it done? Oh, this is, there's just a little patch here that's got brown on it, where it shouldn't have brown. So are we going to touch that up with a brighter colour? There we go, on the elbow. Um, whoa, that's, Fender, that's the reality. 
I've had to deal with it for years. Some people do love to hate. Hence why I am so pleased that about 90% of my subscribers come to my live streams um, rather than, you know, 20% uh, who are normally watching the edited stuff. So I know what the reason is. They're coming, they must be coming for me. That, that's got to be it, right? <laughs> it's taken me years to get better at doing this. I used to get so nervous. I used to just completely freak out. Andre, relax, man. Uh, there will always be people that will try to make you feel bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, no, I haven't. Um, and uh, like I said, uh, once the mortgage is paid off and the house is fixed up, I will just, uh, I'll just paint miniatures and do my live stream uh, once a week, going over player stuff, dungeon master stuff, whatever it might be, whatever thoughts I have, that's probably what is going to likely happen. But that's probably about three years away. Um, till now, we keep doing what we're doing. All right. I am checking out miniature. Is there anything that I need to fix? Oh, keep turning, keep turning. Um, let's see. What, so do you go from work to painting before noon? Okay, so I, I never do a live stream before going to work. I never do live streaming or... Um, uh, on the day I'm working, it is it is too much. It's just not practical. Um, so today is a holiday for me. Uh, I'm on a holiday right now. I would normally work this day, um, but I also do shift work, so that's that changes things as well. Okay, so now I might just use the white and touch up a couple of sections where I feel like they probably shouldn't have brown. Yeah. Okay. Now this is this is the problem. If you guys start to notice that I'm making a mess, you need to tell me, Fred, stop, Fred, stop. It's all right. Because <laughs> I am spotting bits and things that I don't like, and I'm going to try to fix them now. So, yes, I, I tend to stick to the, That's why I do my live streaming, streaming normally on a Friday, because that's my day off. And I used to on the Saturday as well, but I decided in the end it wasn't practical, particularly since I was spending so much time with the Dungeon Master Roundtable, it just wasn't practical to do something like that. It's much more sensible to um, do less, and um, also I had to edit those that stuff together as well and plan it. Getting everybody together in one place is extremely stressful and difficult to do, but it's finally starting to come together which I'm pleased to see. I, oh, I always, when I first started out the channel, I always intended for it to be kind of like that, but I was too afraid to make it happen. I always thought that people would view me as, as, um, as a joke. I have discovered that is not the case. Well, not everybody. And also getting people to take that risk because doing that sort of thing, you know, getting together um, and doing any kind of thing together, it isn't the normal stuff you do, is very, very risky for a YouTuber. And um, the payoff may not be there. It may be some way down the track or it may never show up. Uh, okay, so I am now tidying up brown bits on top. And the ear. That's that bit there. Then I'm happy enough with that. That's all right. I'm I'm fine with that. That's is that ear all right? Maybe the ear. Actually, the, it's kind of furry on the back of the um, ear, so maybe not. I'll leave that alone. Okay. All right. What's this going? What's going on here? A little bit more white there, I think. That's it. And then. So it's just touch-ups now. Just little touch-ups. Nothing too major. And there, oh, there's a big patch there that I need to fix. Okay, brush, clean it out. Andre, do you have any tips about uh, shades? I often just use a dry, dry brush for that and for it. Um, Look, I'm not an expert painter. My brother, um, my youngest brother is much better at this sort of thing. 
frankly, I just try to find um, two or three paints that are sort of going to work, starting with a darker color and working to a lighter color. That's my understanding in terms of sort of shading, is you start with a darker color and work your way to a lighter color. And then once you wash it, it should look pretty good. Although you probably can get away with not even doing it. There was a time when nobody ever used washes. You know, <laughs> if you go far enough back, you're like, ah. Oh. Washes became a thing much later on, I found. Uh, what is your best advice for not coming up short as a DM being unprepared on game night? What's my best advice to you? Uh, my best advice is you go and check out um, Sly Flourish. Um, anything I have to say is probably taken from him. But if you wanted a tool, because you're worried about you know not having material ready when you need it, there is probably two tools that I think that you need to have. That is something to help you relax. I don't, I don't know what that is for you, so you have to figure that out. Some people, uh, I know Wally drinks beer. I know other people like listen to music. I know some people just sit down in a quiet place. That, you've got to find the thing that will help you just calm down. doesn't matter how long it is, frankly, but it's got to be enough time to, to, to calm down. And then the other thing that um, I think is probably really important is a list of names, or at least the ability or a name generator so you can generate names because it's always the thing that, you, that stumbles you your players will try to catch you out on that you know you have an NPC there and if it's got no name or whatever that's always a, a bugger and you don't want to call everything Bob okay uh, hang on just give me a second and there's one other thing that you probably want you want this okay these are story cubes. These are going to help you figure out what to do next. So when you're unsure, you're going to pull this out. You need a title of a book. I've done this sort of thing before. There are just little cubes. They've got different images on all of them. Every single one has got a, a different image on them. There are six sides to them because they are cubes. So every dice has got a different image on every side. And every dice, no, di no dice is, is the same. Okay. And you just roll that. And that gives you an idea for, okay, um, there's a locked door. And this particular lock is quite large. So you could, you could actually literally use a spear to pick this lock. So we're going to be using, you know, a different set of skills. Um, maybe you decide, okay, I need a monster. What sort of monster do I need? I need a monster that's made. I want a rainbow colored monster. Okay. That comes out of the clouds. Literally. Story Cubes will get you everything from traps, the title of a book, a monster, an NPC, the information on an NPC, um, a story, an adventure. It does, it does everything, mate. It does everything. Okay, what do you got here, Brent? After you're done painting, do you finish with a, a dark wash over the whole thing to make it look uh, more detailed? Um, I usually go with a, a darker wash where I want it to be darker. So, um, like all washes, right, you put the wash where you want it to be. Yeah, so I don't wash things a lot, uh, but when I do think that it does need a wash, and I would probably wash this, just because one of the things I did notice with a wash, and you make sure the paint is completely hard before you put the wash on, otherwise you can take off the paint. <laughs> so make sure this, so I can't wash it today. Now it would be it would be a stupid thing to do. I'd have to come back to it later. This is the miniature. Okay, give it a spin. And I give it a wash a couple of days when it had plenty of time to harden. And then, then after that, I'm going to let it dry for quite a long time. And then I would put on my protective coating. And uh, if you don't like gloss finish, which is fine, put the gloss over um, first. You can either brush it on or spray it on. Um, and then put a matte finish over that if you don't want the gloss. But the gloss varnishes and um, finishes are much stronger. That's just the nature of gloss. Good tip on the names and story cubes. Uh, looking, looking them up a lot. Yeah, um, I've got videos on how to use story cubes, uh, and you'll see um, I I help. Uh, what is it? Um, 
uh, Wally DM uh, with some videos on part of some panels where we use them as well. So yeah, check them out. They will help a lot. And it's done. The Rataclysm has finally been completed. I feel like it is ready to wreak havoc on the world. How's that for a scary mother? <laughs> I'm pretty pleased with that. It's worked out really, really well. Hey, thank you to everybody who hung out with me. And uh, thank you to my patrons. Hello, Fender. I'm talking about you. I know you're there. <laughs> thank you to everybody who's been um, willing to watch some very long painting streams, honestly. <laughs> and, and I know... I know that there are some of you who would like me to do far more of them and I can only tell you they will eventually happen but they may, may be like sporadic every four months when I finally get leave rather than as part of my normal scheduling. It just isn't possible. I've got, I'm juggling too many things right now. But thank you for showing up and watching my stuff. It's been great. Uh, wherever you are in the world, whether it be the morning, the afternoon, the night or the wee wee early morning... Okay, look after yourself, your family and your friends. Be nice to your neighbours. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. Oh, that's right. Lost mine of Fendelva tomorrow, by the way. Old Elwell. We're going to talk about it.